Russell and Kuzi are tied with Jordan and Pippen with six each. Magic and Kareem have five. Shaq and Kobe have three. As do Bird and McHale and Steph and Clay. Stockton and Malone are tied with West and Baylor with none, which in both cases ignores their Hall of Fame greatness. At least Jerry West got a second shot and cashed in, tag teaming with the one and only Wilt Chamberlain. And this brings us to Russell Westbrook. Ofer in his efforts with Kevin Durant, but back in the game now with Paul George. OKC is a playoff-worthy ensemble that includes Steven Adams and Jeremy Grant, but it's the partnership between Russ and George that will determine whether OKC is just a playoff team or a serious threat to the Warriors. And while it's prolific offense that usually defines great duos, it's their disruptive defense which is becoming signature. Take two is the NBA equivalent of pick six. Nobody in the league today is as good at take two as Russ and George, who score a league high 10 points per game that way. There's a steal by Paul George. Don't put it there. Don't throw it down. George is averaging a career high in points, rebounds, and steals. OKC is generating a better assist rate, a better rebound rate, and a higher shooting percentage with George on the floor. Surely some of this career best production has to do with his comfort level of playing with Westbrook. Even though Westbrook's offensive numbers are down pretty much across the board, Russ is having one of, if not his best defensive season ever. The Thunder is on pace to finish number two in the league in defensive efficiency, having not finished that high in the last five years. Their partnership is capable of yielding a 40-point scoring performance by George. On the same night, Westbrook is producing a triple-double. You want to know who most of the Warriors see as probably their biggest hurdle in the Western Conference? Not the Rockets and James Harden, not LeBron and the Lakers. It's OKC. What will determine their impact, as always, in the NBA will be how well they play together in the playoffs. In a massively talented and deep Western Conference, one capable of chewing up some very adept duos or being taken down by a suddenly irresistible collaboration. Uh, I got to talk to Will oh. about this. The basketball Yoda. First off, the Golden State Warriors are a super team. Fair. That is not, not a, a not duo. Not a twosome. Absolutely. You didn't like that. You didn't like that. Birds, Celtics, Magic's Lakers... LeBron's Miami Heat and Paul's Boston Celtics, those are trios. Okay. Duos to me, Shaq and Kobe, mm -hmm. Mike and Scotty, Stockton and Malone. Tim and David. Oh, you forgot that. I got you. They were a super team to me. Yeah, but it was still a duo. That team was Manu. a super team? No, that's right, like, when it that, came late. Yeah, good that point, was like point. that was okay. I got y'all, okay. San Antonio. I got y'all. They're distinct. Like that, but that, by the way, it, the fact that the Golden State Warriors themselves <laughs> think OKC is the biggest threat. You have obviously been saying that for a while. Why? Because the Oklahoma City Thunder, first off, they're going to have a chip on their shoulder when they play against the Warriors. Obviously, for the Russ dynamic, KD left OKC. Also, he's going to be able to make Steph work defensively. Paul George has emerged to be an all-NBA caliber player, and they have so much length on the perimeter and athleticism where they can do a lot of switching. And Steven Adams is going to be a wild card because he's going to make Boogie and Draymond Green not only work, but he has the ability to frustrate them as well. First of all, Jay, you know darn well Whoa. Steph is not guarding Russell. The language. He's not going to be making him work. Who are going to guard? Robertson might be back. Whoever. Uh, Starting Fer lineup. Fer Ferguson. Starting lineup. Ferguson. <laughs> Starting lineup. Ferguson. You know Steph is not going to guard him. They're going to put clay on him. But I do agree they are a threat because they play championship-level defense, OKC does. Mm -hmm. And that will always translate, you know, home and on the road. But, you know, the Warriors are the Warriors. Um, there are a few threats. OKC is one. Okay, in a perfect world, you could put anybody or any piece on this OKC team that would make them legit head-to-head -head competitors. What would it be? Oh, man. I mean, I, I just think that they uh, they lack some star. shooting. You need another, another superstar. Another superstar. To, to be able to compete. Golden State raised the bar. You know, it went from an era of two superstars you needed to three. Now you need four in this era to beat the Golden State Warriors. And it's four. impossible for four. any other team in the NBA to get that third, let alone a fourth. So they basically need Kawhi or, or, or something like that. Absolutely. If you want to compete with the Golden State Warriors, that's what you need. I mean, the Golden State Warriors are putting I, out pretty much four, I, I, four I, to five I, superstars. I, I, think, I think the West is closer than the, to the Warriors than everybody realizes. I believe if Chris Paul didn't get injured, they would have lost last year. Yeah, but now the Warriors got better by adding Boogie. Houston got worse. 
OKC got so, better because that man right there took okay, the lead. OKC did get better. Four. Well, that just seems daunting <laughs> now. Uh, after the uh, the Super Bowl, the Bowl I mean, today, I didn't know. The uh, Bowl? On Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt, about live reactions go to, to the go. game, exclusive interviews, plus how does the outcome shape the Brady Belichick legacy? SVP Lewis Riddick, Tim Hasselbeck, break it all down. 11:30 <laughs> Eastern on ESPN and Spygate yeah. revisited. We wow. all know who's gonna win that game. All right, smashing bananas. I can't do the accent. Go Rams. That was a really sad try at doing that. Whoa. Stephen Adams. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. What's wrong with you? Chauncey's going to take a look at the value of the man you just saw, Stephen Adams, and make us all a little bit smarter. That was not a whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't think people realize all the things that he pioneered. Do you think that you will get some white kids to play basketball with Negro kids? I think so. I don't see why not. My kids uh, play with white kids, and nobody got hurt yet. He stood up in times when it was very hard to stand up. Brad, any final words of advice to the new coach? Win! <laughs> When I think about Bill Russell being the first black coach, I think about Red Albach. Red didn't look at Bill as a black man. He looked at him as a man who could coach. Bill Russell allowed the rest of the world to know that if you're qualified, anyone can coach. The most important factor is respect. And basketball respect the man for his ability, period. Without Bill Russell, I'm not... I wouldn't mind seeing him at the other garden. Square garden. Just stop rolling. I would like that show. Way. I would like to see that show. I think Paul's going to start getting scared about this here in a minute. Oh, no, it's upside in Boston where he has the best chance to win a championship. We all. Hey, he already got a championship. He wants another one as the leader of the team. How about triple doubles for Russell Westbrook? Five straight games for him so far. MJ's the other guy that did that. You get six today? I think he does because it's all about his effort and his effort he puts toward assists and rebounding, and he can easily get double-figure points. He's mastered the art of the triple-double, everybody. When you do a two straight seasons, probably a third. I mean, That's fair. he's mastered it. That is Regular totally night fair. At the office for him. We've talked so much about Paul George and the season he's having, Jalen. Is he in the MVP conversation? He's not in the MVP conversation, but he is in the all-NBA conversation, in particular first team. The one thing I like about PG this season is he's playing at his own pace. I thought when he first got to OKC, he tried to play at a frantic pace like Russ. Now he slowed his game down, become more effective, become more efficient. Well, 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 Paul. Jason Tatum, would you offer him in an Anthony Davis trade? You know, it's not every day you can get a generational talent, but maybe Jason Tatum. How about can yes? How <laughs> uh, about yes? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. It depends, on, it, it, it depends on who else goes. If you're talking about straight up, yes. Straight, straight up. Yes. yes. Straight up. You said if I offered him, straight up, yes. You better put two or three other names. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Al Horford. You just said him. <laughs> uh, Celtics have won seven of the last eight games that he's played. What is so important about him? In this Al Horford, glue guy. For the Boston Celtics. In a major way. Absolutely. He can operate from the high post. He can now knock down the three-point shot, defend the opposing team's big, and provide consistent and steady leadership. Well, another name for Paul you can throw in there. Westbrook. Uh, Paul, do you have you have wagers for us? What are we doing? Yes, we're doing one wager. Last minute. Oh, I like that. We're going to guess okay. I need exact it. points from Westbrook for three points today. Just points. Just I need points. this, I guys. Him, I got him for peg for 23. Oh, I was going to almost say that. I'm going to go with 21. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with 